Hello friends, today I'll talk about how to do step by step setup of Oracle 19C 2 node REC, real REC stands for real application cluster. It's a HA feature in Oracle and here what we will be doing is we will be learning to set up a 2 node cluster, REC cluster on Oracle 19C and this tutorial will be step by step which means I'll cover almost most of the steps, not the installation of operating system, I'll tell you what I'll cover and what I'll not cover, but yeah. So we'll we'll learn how to install a Oracle 19C2 node rack. What I've done is I have divided this tutorial into five videos. The first video will cover overview and preparation. So what are the steps involved and what we need to set up our rack. The second video will be just what we'll do is like we'll just create one node rack. So we'll install clusterware and we'll set up the rack on only one node. Then we'll go ahead and install the database software and create database on that particular node. Then in the fourth video, we will learn how to add the second node. So in the fourth video, we'll learn how to add the second video and add the clusterware on the second video, so second node. And finally, we will add the database software on the second node and add the database on second node. The reason why I have done this is because with this approach, not only you will know how to build a cluster, but at the same time, tomorrow, if there is a requirement to add a new node or extend the database to a newly added node, how to do that? So instead of just building the cluster, and installing the database software and creating the database on both nodes. I'm doing it step by step. So we know how to build a cluster, how to install the database software on the newly built, uh, how to add a new node, then how to extend the database. So that would be approach that I would take. And hence this particular tutorial is divided into five videos. The environment that I'm using is I'll be using Oracle Enterprise Linux 7.8. So that would be an Oracle Database 19C and Oracle VirtualBox 6.0.22 and it's all Oracle. So we will be using all Oracle things to do this particular activity. The, the steps that we would need is we will be building two virtual machines using Oracle Virtual Enterprise Linux. I am not going to cover this because there will be there are so many tutorials or so many videos online that you will find on how to build your virtual machine what are the packages that needs to be there in your virtual machine so literally how to build your virtual machine or how to install the os onto it and number of videos and i just don't want to repeat that part you you need to make sure that you allocate at least 10 gb per ram per node so you need close to 20 gb only for rack and additionally maybe 4 GB so a machine with 24 GB you can do it on 6 GB RAM if you want to do it it just that it will be slow and you'll get warnings the the next part is we'll be setting up the the 12 GB for ASM data so this will be ASM data and this will be an ASM disk which will be for OCR so we'll be creating two disk uh, shared disk for one for the data and one for the OCR Using this shared storage, we'll be creating the ASM disks. Then we'll be setting up the networking. The networking needs one private IP, one public IP, and one, so basically we need four IPs, two IPs per node, and then we need VIPs, one per node, and then we need at least three scan IPs. So if I have to say this, the requirement of IPs is two IPs per node. So two plus two, four plus two VIPs, one VIP per node, which means another two, six plus another three, your scan IPs that comes out to be six plus three is equal to nine. So you need nine IP addresses. You will be setting up your ETC host based on this particular information. You will be setting up the NTP crony. My NTP crony works sometimes. It sometimes doesn't work. It's just that my virtual machine is not able to connect to the internet to get the NTP time. So and hence, Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't work. So if I get a warning on NTP, I'm just going to ignore that particular warning, thinking that my both the nodes are synced to each other. The we will be installing the Oracle 19C packages. This is going to install lot of the lot of the required 
RPMs, the necessary packages which are required by Oracle database and also it's going to set up the Oracle limits for Oracle user. It's, if the user is not there, it's going to create it and it's going to set up so many so limits required, the kernel parameters for the Oracle software. We also need to make sure that we have, we need to, the SSH between the Oracle user. I'm not going to use a different user for greed and different user for Oracle. I'm going to use the same user called Oracle and hence I only will be setting up the SSH between Oracle user. Then you need to create the necessary op directories, one for grid installation, one for the database installation, one for the grid base and one for the Oracle base. So you'll need at least four directories all owned by Oracle user. Then you would be unzipping the grid software on node one. You will be unzipping the database software on node one. You will be installing this particular package, which is part, which is present in the grid software. Optionally, you will be running the cluster verification utility to make sure everything goes fine. And then finally, you will verify the prerequisites. So let me repeat, the steps are pretty long. So you build a virtual machine, then you allocate at least 10 GB per RAM, you set up your share storage, you create the ASM disk out of this share storage, you set up your networking, you set up your etc host file, you set up your NTP crony, you use this particular command to install the necessary packages, the database required packages such as Unix, ODBC, KSH and all of that. You will be setting up the SSH between Oracle user. You will be creating the necessary directories and then you will be unzipping the grid software only on node one. You won't do it on both nodes. You only need to unzip on one node and the database software also you will be unzipping on only one node. You don't have to do it on both the nodes. And then finally, you will be installing this particular RPM. This particular RPM is present in the grid software. And then you'll be running the cluster verification utility and verifying the prerequisites. That's the step part one. The, in the second video, we'll be installing the grid software using the grid setup.sh on the first, first node. Then we will be running the run installer to install the database software and then after the database software is installed, we will be using the DBCA to create the database on the first node. So with when we are done with part 2 and part 3, our rack is built but only the rack is having only one node. The, the rack, the cluster software is installed, the database software is installed and the database is also created. So when we are, when we reach to this particular step when we reach to the end of the part three our one node is fully operational then in the part four we will be learning how to add a new node to the cluster so what we need to do to add a new node to the cluster so using the add node.sh we'll be adding the new node to the cluster and finally we'll be using the add node.sh to extend the database uh, home onto the second node and finally running the dbca to add the instance so when we are done with the part 5 we have two node cluster with database installed on both the nodes so that would be the fifth video and you you need to have patience and if you if you have already done all of this then you can directly skip to part 2 and we can you can start installing your grid software so let me start with my virtual box environment i you, as you can see, I don't have any machines right now. So let me go here and add these two machines to my virtual box. So I have created two machines called DB1 and DB2. So the, my machine name is DB1 and DB2. That's my machine and it's Oracle Enterprise Linux 7.8. That's what I'm using. And I'll be using Oracle Virtual Box 6.0.22. So that would be the version that I'll be using. So first thing that we need to do, let's follow the document and we need to make sure we have 10 GB, which I have already done. And we need to set up the share storage. So 12 GB for ASM data and 4 GB for OCR. So let's do that. Let me only have one. Okay, so I have this session. So let me go to settings, click on storage, click on controller, click on add hard disk. So let me repeat. So let me go to, let me select this machine. I can right click and then I can say settings or I can click settings here. Either way is fine. So let me click it here. Then go to storage, go to controller, SATA controller, add hard disk and then create new disk and VDI 
and here you will be saying fixed size remember you will be saying fixed size you will not be saying dynamically allocated and then you will give the path where you want to store the disk so i want to store this disk in this location so let me put this particular location and i'll be giving the name to this particular disk so let me give this as asm disk asm disk 1 so let me give them as a disk 1 and i'll be giving 12 gb to this particular asm disk so let me create it the creation because it's going to it's a fixed size so it's physically going to take 12 gb of space on your storage on your hard drive so make sure that you have that much space available for the disk to be created so 12 gb the asm disk for asm data so this will be an asm disk for the data which is allocated at 12 gb now we'll be creating the ocr disk so the steps are same so right click add hard disk create new disk vdi then choose fix size next and here you will be mentioning instead of uh, the instead of make, mentioning this as uh, the ASM disk will be mentioning this as an OCR disk and let me click and say 4 GB for OCR Oracle says 2 GB is sufficient I have allocated the 4 GB so I got 4 GB disk and I got 12 GB disk if you see the size of this is 4 GB and if I show you the size of this it's 12 GB so this particular disk is for the data and this is for the OCR now next part that I'll need to do is I need to so now right now that particular disk are attached to node 1 and not to node 2 so that if I go here and if I show you storage those disks are not attached and we can't attach them to here because those disks are not shareable they are normal so let me go to virtual media manager select those disks that we created click here the down if it is this this is not shown then click on properties it goes and if you click on properties again that option comes back so you say shareable and then you click on apply and you also make the ocr disk shareable so let me click on properties again make it shareable click apply so once they are made shareable now if i go here and click on settings and if i go to the, this one these are all normal but if you see here then you can see that they are shareable so if you see here they are normal while well, this asm disk shareable and asm disk shareable which means we can attach this disk to another node so let me go to the second node go to settings go to storage right click add hard disk choose existing disk now and we'll be using this disk and then we'll be choosing the OCR disk so we'll be attaching those two ASM disks the data disk and OCR disk to our node 2 so click OK and then you are ready to boot your machine so right now I need to do everything on node 1 so let me just start the node 1 and since the boot up is going to take some time I'm going to pause the video and come back when the boot up is done so my boot up is done and I'm ready to log in as root I should be logging as root actually to do some initial bits so let me log in as root okay so first thing first so we will be seeing our disk right now so f disk minus l to see all our disk and if you can see we have so many disk and all other disk will have the partition but if you see the if you see d e all have partitions but if you see the disk f and g the f is of 12 gb while g is of 4 gb they don't have any partition right now so this disk don't have the partition so let using the f disk command we can create the partition so what 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 you can do is we can say f disk minus sorry f disk and give the name name of the disk so 
what was the disk name uh, yeah it is f so let me give the disk name and then you have to say new for partition primary partition then one default default and finally write so you have to use these options to create the disk similarly do this for the next disk as well so the same thing we have to do for g so new partition primary partition one default default and write so that's done so now if i show you f disk minus l command then you will see that we have the partition for f which was not there sorry f which was not there and also we have a partition for g so we got the partition created so now what we need to do is we need to use the uh, we need to make sure that we have installed the the necessary oracle asm packages so we'll do which i have already done but if i have to show you what are those packages those two packages are oracle asm so these are the two packages that i have already installed and using this particular packages then once you have installed this particular packages what you'll do is we will mention you'll use oracle asm configure minus i command to configure the default settings for the oracle asm as who owns the driver so oracle who owns the which group owns the driver dba do you want to start the asm on boot yes and do you want to scan for oracle disk scan uh, sorry asm disk on boot and you say yes and if you want to change the option you can change i have already set them so i just showed you so if i if you want to, if you are doing it for the first time you'll say oracle then dba you'll say y and y and then it's written so that's that's done so then next step is to create the two disks so if i if i show you if i do the scan disk and list disk you will not find so if you see there are currently i don't have any asm disk for this particular machine so using this create disk oracle asm create disk for so the the one which we created with the 12 gb the this one asm sdf1 so i'll be saying asm data 1 so i'll be using that as asm data 1 and then the the, the next one which is g1 that that would be i'll be creating as ocr so that's done and now i'll be scanning my disk and i can see oh right so i okay okay that's fine i i wanted to say ocr i said cough that's that's okay i can relabel it but that's fine so right now i got this disk and i got this particular disk which is the data disk and the ocr disk my next part would be to make sure that asm starts so i'm going to enable this particular service enable it and start it so i, I believe it's already been started but this particular activity enable what what i'm saying by enable is like every time when the serv the server starts start the oracle asm service and right now start it so using this particular system ctl command i have started the asm service and also enabled the service so that it starts automatically at the next boot up and remember that this particular uh, create disk for uh, and formatting f disk we have to do only on node 1 on the node 2 we just have to scan them and they should be there because on node the, the, the these disks are shared so whatever changes that you do on node 1 they will be there on node 2 and you just have to scan them so that's done so we have created our asm disk next part is networking so i just want to show you how my networking looks so if i show you if config grep inet i got this 0 0.101 that's my private ip 1.101 that's my public ip and this is my internet facing ip this is not required uh, only these two ips are required so public ip private ip and public ip similarly on node 2 i will have so let me show you my etc file which is the next step here look at the etc host file so let's i want to show it to you i have already created the necessary entries so let me show it to you how it looks so if i put this in the middle if you can see the 101 
a the the node one is named as db1 that's node one with the fqdn as db1 dot db dot con and with the ip of 1.101 the private ip for this is 101 but it is 0 0.101 and the vip is 1.103 and the vip will be there in the public ip if you see the subnet one the subnet for virtual ip is also one and the scan ip is also in the public subnet so and then you have the two 1.102 for node 2 and 0 0.102 for node 2 so that's done and while it is doing that let me boot up my node 2 because i need to now check the ntp crony so my ntp crony doesn't work so let me just start it if it is not started i have some problems with internet my host doesn't connect to internet all the time sometimes it connects sometimes it doesn't connect see it it did not connect here so now let me see my ntp status if it is running i'm happy if it is not i'm not happy but yeah looks like it is running so it's inactive it's not running so, so it's it's fine i i just have to live with that i just have to live with the fact that yeah it's it's running let's see whether it stays running so okay so uh, looks like it is running right now and i should be happy with that fact but it it doesn't stay i have some problems with my ntpd next and i'm going to ignore it I'm just going to ignore the errors with NTPD. The next part is this way, which I have already done. Install all the necessary Oracle packages. So it's going to set up some kernel parameters. If you look at the this file, if you look at cat etc dot sys sorry uh, sys city l dot con grep Oracle okay i think it's not cctl cctrl i believe okay mm -hmm. cd slash etc ls minus l sys okay so cctl.conf okay so if i look at this file that's what i said i believe uh, graph minus i okay looks like okay so if i show you this file you will see that okay had minus 20 so if you see i got all of these parameters set for the oracle user so literally not oracle user at the system level so these particular parameters have been set by this particular package so i have not modified them whatever been set by this particular package i have just accepted them then i will i need to set up my ssh between the two users so let's see whether yeah it's already started so now what i need to do is i need to make sure that the node one is able to connect to node two using the passwordless ssh so let me connect as oracle user so make sure that i am so here what i'll do is i'll go to my new node so if you see from db1 i have switched to db2 and looks like my ssh is working so now if i come back to db1 that also works so if i come back to db2 it works and from here i can go to db2 so my ssh and again as i said i am only using the oracle user i'm not using the grid user so i have set up the ssh between only the oracle user if you if you configure the different user for your grid and different user for oracle database then you will have to set up the ssh between the grid user as well as oracle user uh, but i have done it because i'm using the same user for grid and the the oracle database software uh, i i have set up the ssh only for the oracle user so that's done so ssh is working then we need to create the necessary directories so what are the directories so I, as i said i'll be creating one directory for the grid install one for the database install one for the grid base and one for the oracle base so what i'll do is like i'll i'll create these four directories so what i'll do is like first i'll go to this particular location and clear if there is anything already there 
and same time go on the second node and clear if there is anything there so i have emptied this so let me show you there is absolutely nothing and let me clear this and there is absolutely nothing so i'm going to create these four directories one for the database base one for the database software one for the grid base and one for the grid so these are the four directories that i'll be creating on both the nodes so that's done and if i show you i got these four directories and if i do it here okay okay so i actually did it on db2 so let me do it uh, let me exit and now i'm on db1 and let me show it to you that i don't have okay so i have to go to this particular location and let me clear anything and everything which is there already so it's going to take some time and then clear absolutely nothing is there and then hit these four commands and create these four directories called database base grid base the database install and the grid install so i have set up these directories on both the nodes the db1 and db2 and then we will be unzipping the grid software on node 1 and unzipping the database software on node 1 and checking this particular package which i which we will install and optionally will be running the cluster verification utility so what i'll do is why we, we need to do that so i'll pause the video and log in right now i have logged in as a root user i'll log in as the oracle user so i have logged in as an oracle user so let me open the terminal right now i have been i logged in as an oracle user so the first step is to go to unzip the software so if i go to this particular location and you can see i don't have any files so what i'll do is i will open this into another terminal and show you that i don't have any files here so what i'll do is using this i have set i have used at this location this is i kept my the 19c grid and the database home so i'm going to unzip them to these two locations so let me take this particular and we have to only have these binaries on one node we don't have to do it on both the nodes so and if i show you here which was showing that ls minus l is zero now if i do ls minus l you can see all of these directories and if i keep doing this you will find that many more because the unzip has started unzipping the grid software in the directory that we have this one and this unzip is going to take a little bit of time so i'll pause the video and come back okay so looks like my unzip is completed so yeah unzip is completed so now if i come here and show you the files i got this grid setup where is my yeah the grid setup and i got my run cluster verify dot sh so once the unzip is done what is our next step the cvu so let's check whether that particular package is already installed so let me clear my screen and rpm minus qa wrap for this particular package if it is already installed we don't have to install it yes it is already installed and let's see on the node 2 also whether that particular package is already installed if it is not installed you'll have to install it and where can you find that package is you can go to your grid location so let me exit out of it here and if i if i show you my grid location and here you will find cv a directory called cv so if you go to that particular directory cv and under that if you click go to rpm here you will find one file you can use this particular file using rpm minus i cvu but again you have to do this as a root user now that's done so we have verified that this one and now what we'll do we'll use the we'll run the cluster verification utility so the cluster verification utility that i'm using is run cluffy stage pre crs install on this particular two nodes so i'm going to run this and it's going to actually it's going to give me some errors and if those errors are not significant i'm going to ignore them so if where is the run cluffy it's there in the main location this is my main 
unzip location and if you can see run cluffy this particular utility and i'm going to use this particular command to verify the prerequisites and that's started running it's going to and it's going to fail with some of the it's going to give me warnings or it's going to fail for some of the things and if those are not significant i'm going to ignore them and finally our last step is verify the prerequisites so how am i going to verify the prerequisites this is one option and the other option is i'm actually going to launch my grid setup so let me go to my grid setup i'm not i'm just going to verify things i'm not going to actually run the grid so if this is where and if you see here there is a there is one soft there will be one not there will be one binary called grid setup.sh so we'll use this particular grid dot and this particular utility you have to launch as a oracle user so let me press enter and let's see what it is doing so memory passed uh passed pass so i i okay so i have not set the separate group for asm and it's all uh, i'm using the only one group if you see my id i have only one group i don't have multiple groups so that's why it is failing i'm going to ignore it but rest all pass 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 so looks like i'm i'm doing good so many things have passed and we'll leave less the things that i have failed i'm going to ignore i'm going to ignore this particular thing because i'm not going to set up the different user groups for the this one so pass 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 i'm doing good so if you see things are looking good verifying ntp let's see whether it pass okay even that looks like that passed so while it is doing this what we'll do is we'll so what are the options configure oracle grid infrastructure for a new cluster that, that's <clears throat> okay so apart from awahi daemon is running is running okay <coughs> okay so apart from this awahi daemon and some of the other things i okay ntp has failed which i was expecting and some of the groups have failed uh which i'm expecting and i got this web size also failed which i'm going to ignore so i am going to ignore some of the warnings so what i will do is like we'll go next and the we'll use oracle grid infrastructure new cluster then we'll click on oracle standalone cluster then we'll give the scan name from where we'll get this information we'll get this information from our cat etc hosts so i'm going to use this particular i'll use this particular name here listener po listener uh, port or scan port 1521 and i'll give the name let's say i'm giving rack cluster that's what i want to give this name the cluster so that's done as going to very validate my scan name if it is successful then i'm i'll be presented with the next screen so that's done so this is my local node this is it has already chosen uh, since I'm not going to install in this particular tutorial. This is only checking the prerequisites. So I'm going to add the second node, and my second node is this. So let me take this name, and I need to give the virtual IP of the second node. So let me take this, paste it here, and go to the. So I've I given the public name and the VIP for the first node and the public name for the second node and the whip for the second node then is going to test the, and then i'm going to say next and it's going to ask us the network interface usage what are the private ips what is the public ip so it's testing the passwordless ssh connectivity between the selected nodes and it's going to take some time if my passwordless ssh is good like the db1 the node 1 is able to connect to node 2 or node 2 is able to connect to node 1 this particular check is going to pass otherwise it's going to fail so let's see the result whether it is says the pass or fail it's taking a bit of time and i will allow it to run i cannot do anything literally i cannot cancel it so now it has it looks like it has passed so it's accessing the public so the as i said the zero the zero ip is my private so zero is my private and one is my public and the private ip i will also configure for my asm so i'll be using 
the ASM on private IP. So next, let's click on the next. And now it is presented with the. So I'll be using Oracle Flex ASM for storage. So this is where I'll be specifying. Uh, I'll be using the OCR disk. So I'll be using the Oracle ASM for storage. The grid infrastructure management repository. I'll be saying no. And the next part here, it the if you can if I can show you that I got my two disks which are listed here but i can't seems to the oracle is not able to seems to find those disks i need to do a simple thing change the discovery path so i'll be changing the discovery path here and now i can see the cor which was which was supposed to be ocr 4 gb and the asm data disk which is of 12 gb so i'm going to click this i'm going to name this this as ocr disk and i'm going to click on external so because i have only one disk so that's done so I, i'm allocating this disk as the ocr disk for the uh, uh this particular disk is not only the ocr disk it will be also the voting disk as well so i'm allocating this particular disk as ocr plus voting disk next i'm going to use the same password to make it simple but if you in the production you would like to have a different password but i'm going to keep the same password and i'm going to keep the password as password which is pretty simple and it gives me warning and i'm going to ignore this particular warning the intelligent management interface i'm going to say no and register with em cloud control i'm going to say no and the groups i'm going to give all as one group called dba i'm not going to give different group because i have only one group for this particular user so i'm going to give that and it's going to give me this warning which i'm going to ignore this is where it's going to install the the software this is the grid based software so the grid is installed in this so i have created a directory if i go to this particular location if i go to this particular location you will find that i have got a separate directory so oracle v19 grid so this is the grid and if i come back this this sorry this is the software where all the packages are there and this is where i'm running that grid setup.sh so i'll come back one and if you see i have set up another directory called the grid base so this is what i'll be giving this particular directory is what I'll be giving. This particular directory is right now empty. If you can see, this particular directory is what I'll be giving as it says Oracle base for the grid. So the base of the grid. So that's done. And Oracle inventory. Yeah, that looks okay for me. And next part is the if you want to run any root scripts by user root then you can give the root credentials or you can give the sudo for the oracle root so you can do that but i'm not going to do that so let me click on next and now it's going to do the prerequisite checks it's going to perform all the checks and if anything fails it's going to give us the warning or the error message that we can ignore or this one so what i'll do is i will pause for this particular comeback and once the results are there i'll resume the video so it started doing this so should i just keep talking something while it's doing this check or should i pause the video i better pause the video and i'll come back before it finishes so i got some of the warnings resolve.conf integrity so these files are not matching on node 1 and node 2 which i need to fix as i said my ntp doesn't work this warning i'm going to ignore swap size i'm going to ignore rpm package manager i'm going to ignore and i'm not going to ignore this particular warning it says that my etc dot file is not matching on both the nodes so let me take a look at this particular file the resolve.com file and see what is the error so etc dot resolve dot conf so it looks like this on node 1 and let's see what is the file how that file looks like on node 2 so let me 
log into node 2 ssh db2 so i'm going to node 2 and then okay so i need to if you see the ip here the ip is 1.118 and here it is 1 so let me edit that ip okay that's done so i kept okay 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 i think i cannot i'm i'm logged in as oracle user so i should have done this as sudo and that's done so now what i'll do is i will just check again not all it won't check all of it it's going to check only those failed ntp is going to fail again I don't have a choice on that so that warning is go gone and I'm going to ignore all of these warnings and what I can do ignore all and click next and then it's going to show me the summary page um, it says I've ignored and finally it clicks if I click on install then it's going to install the grid software on two nodes the DB1 and DB2 but what I'm what I'm intend to do, if you see the hub nodes is DB1 and DB2, so that's where it's going to install. But what I intend to do is I'm going to install the grid software on only one node, and I'll be canceling this, stopping this video here, and seeing you in the next video where we will be installing the grid software only on one node. So that would be our next video. The, the this particular video is exactly the same what we have done here but except the for the fact that in this particular video if you if i go back if i go back all the way i chose both the nodes but what i'll i need to do is i'll be removing this particular node and i will be running the particular setup so let me pause this video and come back sorry let me stop this video and come back for the next video thank you for watching and see you in next video. Bye-bye.